Modern DevOps practices utilize advanced Kubernetes deployment techniques like blue-green, canary, shadow, and feature gate deployments. In this video, we discuss the blue-green deployment method. My name is Ahmed Al-Fakharani, and this is my channel. A typical application can be installed on a Kubernetes cluster using a deployment resource. The deployment resource natively supports two update methods, the rolling update and the recreate. When you need to upgrade the application, for example, the image tag, the container arguments, or any other aspects, the deployment resource performs a rolling update. A rolling update aims at achieving zero downtime by incrementally creating new pods and deleting the old ones. As new pods are created, they are added to the load balancers pool while the old ones are drained of existing connections. Any new connection is always directed to the new pods. This way, clients will not feel any service disruption since any connection is always served. This is the default strategy. The other one is called recreate. It simply deletes all the pods in one go and replaces them with the new ones. Despite causing service disruption for end users, the recreate strategy has its use cases. The most well-known, perhaps, is when there is a security update that must be applied immediately to all the pods at the same time. Any existing connections must be severed to protect the clients from any possible attacks that could use the vulnerability addressed by the security patch. So those are the deployment methods that are natively supported by Kubernetes. Yet sometimes they are not enough. For example, what if you want to apply the recreate strategy, but your application is mission critical that you cannot afford to have any downtime? Or what if you want to roll back a failed deployment and maintain 100% service availability? For this type of use case, you can use the blue-green deployment method, which we discuss in this video. Blue-green involves a straightforward setup. Instead of having one set of pods, you have two. One is blue, serving live traffic, and the other one is green and is always on standby. The green could be a staging environment, for example, where pre-deployment tests can be performed. When we want to roll out a new application version, we update the image version on the green environment and run any required tests like QA, acceptance, stress testing, whatever you want. When ready, we switch traffic from the blue to the green in the load balancer or the service. Any remaining connections to the blue environment are drained. New connections are routed to the green set. This way we have no downtime and simultaneously we replaced all the pods. If rollback is needed, we switch the connection from green to blue. The next time we upgrade, it is done on the standby environment, which becomes the staging one, and so on. The benefits of this method are, you have zero downtime while upgrading a rolling back. At the same time, testing is done on a replica of the production environment. This ensures that the bugs are spotted early enough and in a real scenario. The drawbacks, however, is that you need to double your production capacity while using only 50% of what you have to serve live traffic. Now, let's see how we can apply blue-green deployments in a Kubernetes environment using a CI-CD pipeline. A service resource works by routing traffic to pods. It recognizes which pods it needs to route traffic to by their labels. This is native Kubernetes work. So, given our application, we will create two deployment resources instead of one. We call the first app blue with the pods it manages labeled blue, and the second one is app green with the pods labeled green. The blue deployment is the one that would serve live traffic. Accordingly, the service is configured to target the blue pods. The green pods are on standby and do not serve any live traffic. We could have an internal service that targets those pods for testing purposes, but it's not exposed to end clients. This is just for internal use. When we need to update the application, we change the green deployment. Then we patch the service to target the green pods. This way, we switch traffic from the blue to green without incurring any downtime. Rolling back is as easy as patching the service again to route traffic from the green pods to the blue ones. If you are using Helm in a CI CD pipeline, like for example GitLab CI, this could be done by creating a second deployment template and appending the pod label with blue or green depending on which pods are served. We must change the deployment template to have two distinct images, blue and green. The service template is also modified by appending a string defining which pod group the service should target. This string should be a value to enable the pipeline to select which deployment should be live through the command line as we're going to see. If you need to know more about Helm, check my Helm video. The link is at the top of the screen. Alternatively, and if you are serious about learning the ins and outs of Helm, including real-world examples, you can enroll in my 4-hour Helm course on Udemy. 
you'll find a link to the class in the description, including a discount coupon with over 90% off. Now, back to our topic. In the values file, we already have an image value defining the repository and the tag of our Docker image. We can modify this value to point to the blue image and duplicate it to define the green one. When we want to update the application, we typically run Helm command like Helm upgrade hyphen hyphen install my release, which is the name of my release, hyphen hyphen set image dot tag equals like v1, for example, which could be the new image that we want to deploy. Then we point to the Helm repo and the chart name. This is typical Helm work. In blue-green deployments, we modify the procedure to be as follows. First, we set the blue image value instead of just the generic image since we have two image values now. We also add the hyphen hyphen weight flag to ensure that all the pods are created or replaced before going on with the pipeline. Our following command is to prepare for the green deployment. Since this is our first pipeline running, we must set the green pods to the green image. Next, we run a Helm command to modify the service to point to the blue pods. So the first two commands are just preparing the deployments. The third one is configuring the service to point to this or that. Now, what if you want to deploy the next application version? Simply, we can just change the green deployment tag to point to the green image and modify the service point to the green pods. To make the pipeline even more robust, we can add an if condition that evaluates whether the intention is to change the deployment, switch traffic, or just update the deployment. So let's say, for example, that we want to update our green deployment to the latest image, but we don't want yet to expose this to live traffic. We just want to make tests. We want to make QA. We want to make stress testing or user acceptance testing or other testing methods. We could just use Helm to update the deployment to make green having our latest image and blue serving the old one and still exposed to live traffic. Then when testing is done, we can modify this value so that the if condition evaluates to true and the service exposes our newest deployment to live traffic. So in this video, we explained how we can implement blue-green deployments in a CI CD pipeline using Helm in a Kubernetes environment. Blue-green is a powerful technique because it allows you to switch traffic from one deployment to another without losing any connections or having any outage. At the same time, you have a chance to perform QA testing on a real environment in a real deployment scenario to spot any bugs early enough. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel to be notified of the latest DevOps and GitOps educational videos as soon as they get published. You can also connect with me over LinkedIn or check my Udemy courses. My name is Ahmed Al-Fakharani. Thanks for watching.